Let's see if we can. Been done, lovely. Thank you very much. There we are. Lovely. Lovely. Thanks very much. Right on through. promenade element and at the beginning uh, being ushered through the bright sunshine and then stepping into the theatre and feeling quite, it was really quite industrial. But in a sense I had no expectations but what gradually encroached on me was that there was no, I like the idea that there was no ideological hiding place for the audience. Follow on through. Yeah, just follow on through, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Just follow the right through. There were some very uncomfortable things confronting me, which had been so far from my mind when I was walking through the sunshine and through Truro to get here. I'm sitting here kind of looking at this graffiti on the safety curtain. I mean, that, you know, that in itself has got a sort of radical, you know, I mean, just yeah. to sort of use the theatre in that way. It looks good, doesn't it? Um, and I can see there, there are statements on that. I can see the word process. Um, there's a sort of deconstruction of some of the ideas on there. Um, it's a kind of revealing of what of what we've been going through, which is quite interesting. I hope people really, really do read it and look at it and pick up on it. Panthers in a line. We're looking at interdisciplinarity, we're looking at a new form, we're looking at bringing narrative and dance and movement and the theatre elements together to make something new. And we're trying to find out about that. We're finding out about working practice and ourselves and finding more out about how we work together and discovering more about each other and how they work together. Um, I'm working with a new team, a team that I've not mm. worked with before. Mm. Some of I have, but others I haven't. Working with that new team and trying to involve people in the creative process. So we set ourselves quite a big challenge. Yeah. And actually, all that talent has come together and created something which I think is rich. I'm going to be interested to see how people react to it. Mm. So I think people are yes. going to react to it, and not all are going to be. Some people are going to react to something quite in a way where they don't understand what's going on. I really enjoyed meeting people around my space, and um, yeah, people did want to pick up the objects, which was really nice. Um, and I hope it wasn't too off putting because it's always you want to be able to well welcome an audience and if they feel uncomfortable not make them feel uncomfortable to the extent that they want to sort of back off and are not having a, a kind of enjoyable experience so I hoped you know that's something I might have worked with you know if I had got the chance to do it some more with don't touch my things which is one of my things how is that still holding people or is it making them feel alienated I suppose
I suppose there's two there's two parts to what I was involved with really. One is making noises, and and the other is putting noises into space. It, what's been good about this it, in, and having a theatre to, to work in, because you know, I just sit in the studio or whatever, there's, and the speakers, two of them, and they don't move, and the listeners don't move, but you guys are moving around. And so it became not only making noises that were somehow coherent or not coherent, but getting, composing the space, if that doesn't sound too pretentious. We had the resources of the theatre, so really we just had to distill things from the research process. So for me, it could only ever be about research and not that much development, um, because there was only really the opportunity to start researching an idea. And in a way, if I thought it was going to work, I felt like I should let go of it, because if it was truly research and development, I didn't need to develop an idea that I thought would work. <laughs> it seemed to me um, that Kevin in a kind of a way, is a, is a, is a mediator. High-functioning in a sense that he's not... He perhaps doesn't have quite the sort of hermit-like quality of um, Brett's character, nor the, the fear and anxiety of, the, of Mary's character. Um, So I think that he he can float and he can go around and I think that he may be a, he may be f on the road and kind of have stepped out of the conventional society in some senses. But I think while he's around, he's probably a reasonably strong character to to have in a team in a gang. But perhaps he's um, somewhat feckless as well and will also you know, absent himself and, you know, won't always be there. Yeah, the text actually came sort of in, the, in the latter half of the time that we've spent together. Um, in fact, yes, it was between uh, the, our last meeting and, and this week. So um, I had a, an idea that I was a, a peace protester. But when we last met in June, it was, I found it quite hard to incorporate that into what we'd done in February and what was happening at the time. So then I got some specific text to learn and to, to put into it. And I think because the, the showgirl image is, is very strong 
and has lots of flourishes, as Jackie calls them. It gave me a good springboard to, to deliver these uh, quite sort of stark statements. <laughs> Bit on the head, and the rest, as I've said, is in the lap of the gods. It's down to luck. Takes care of one. And petrified of speaking in performance, unless it's in a whisper. Um, and Jackie and Tim were aware of this and were quite keen to encourage me to start being more vocal. But my performance history has always been from movement. And so it's like this weird threshold to cross, to communicate something through word rather than through body. I'm still not there. But, um, gently, gently. <laughs> Each person had a different postcard, and two of us were given a postcard, um, representations of, uh, they were images of Francis Bacon. I jumped in, both feet flexed. The one or two black nasty fuckers. By and large, you see each other right. Mm. I had a triptych. Um, I've not seen, I think I've seen the original, but in any case, it's, it was, it's three small panels. Obviously, the original's are really large. And so there was an image of a, of a man sitting down, and then another sitting down, and in the middle, as I recall, there's this little blur of his body kind of spilled over the floor. Um, so really visceral, really um, vulgar, really raw. There are all the kind of you know, ideas around violence and kind of being pulled apart, sort of psychologically and physically. It was my life for a while. But back then, they didn't want queer bastards. What was the fuck to do? So, welcome to our world. Don't get me wrong, when I had my place, I liked it nice, I had old books, I had a photo of a cave of good hope. But I let the place go because of this lad. Fucking went berserk, fucked it right over, me and all. I didn't have the stomach to keep on after that. I mean, what's the point when it just ends up being a trap? Fucking dead end. Might as well just move on and see what happens. I'm loyal to whoever I'm with at the time. If I arrive with you, I'll not leave with another. Most people just want to be proper messed up and pressed up hard against the wall till they're moaning. Take you, for instance. All right, so, do you think you've got the answer? Do any of us think we've got the answer? Well, I'll tell you what, when I write that, my answer, let's play cards. Otherwise, why are we giving airtime to this? Why not just bob off and have a coding? I mean, as I'm a classically trained actress and, and, and the majority of roles I've done have been within the realms of some sort of realism and naturalism, normally. Um, and what you know, I've talked a little bit about before, I mean, quite often I would go, I would go away with a character from a play that I was doing and I would, I would come up with a backstory. <laughs> I would come up with a backstory for the character, where they were from, what they were doing, how they, how, uh, you know, how, what other characters say about them, um, to try and give a sort of a real internalised life to the character. Um, and I suppose, and, and actually that, we were encouraged to do that in this process, we were encouraged to go away and, and, and 
work with whatever we got and try and come up with a backstory. But actually, I felt it for me, it didn't seem helpful. So what I've actually done is, I mean, we've done huge quantities of work from different sources. We've got the postcards, we had poems, we, we've done, we've done duologues, we've done trios, we've done all sorts of stuff. And, um, and from that, I, I, I had all this range of different characters. I, I, you know, I had all these snippets of characters. Um, and very clearly, I mean, some people only, you know, they seem to work within all the work we did within about one or two, maybe two different characters. For me, I had at least sort of four or five different characters. And I didn't want to kind of bin any of them. I felt like I'd developed something in all of them. And so it's trying to find a link, trying to find some way to kind of bring those, all those different characters together and use them all within this piece, this show, whatever it may be. I'm involved in a freedom ride, protesting the minority rights of the few remaining earthbound stars. What all we demand is our right to twinkle. Lydia. Having the gestation over the, the period of months since February, with time elapsing in between and many different things happening in between, has informed the development in a quite a key way. It's quite different from the intense three-week rehearsal. I also think that getting to know this group of people over time, um, there's an ease that develops. It was always good, but I think even now it's, it's, you know, it's like that kind of norming, storming, reforming thing happens. We've been through several processes of that. You know, the day when you leave rehearsal, everyone's in cloud nine, and the day you leave rehearsal, everyone's feeling a bit, you know, worse for wear. And having been through those ups and downs, we now know that I think that it's okay, and these this, these people are good. You know, you can rely not so much you can rely on them, but actually you really like being together, and it's a great opportunity. So I think that comes through time as well. So I've I've appreciated the maturing of the relationships. Community centre. You're gorgeous, he said. We went upstairs, cold floorboards. Rage. Wait. I knew that she was dead. But I thought that I also had died.
I started out, I'm, I'm, I was brought up as a traveller, so I'd done quite a lot of, I was sort of aware of performance art or art on the street, busking, etc. from an early age. Um, and I've travelled for, you know, lived and worked on the road with the circus for 20 years of my life, so um, a lot of my performance influences have come from the street, not necessarily um, <clears throat> any pure forms, but just the awareness in the street of people and if you do things that are different, whether it's performance art or clown or circus, or you know, how the, it, the, the interface between you and, and people going about their normal lives and stuff. So that's always been a great interest to me. And the idea of communicating ideas and feelings and, and, and catalysts for sort of action. You know, I'm, I'm an environmentalist and a lot of my performance has been related to a sort of urgency to wake people up to the, the plight of the planet, you know, that sort of thing. So um, there's been a lot of that in my work. Um, I did train in France. Most of my formative training years were in France at Le Coq, which is a sort of school for physical theatre in Mime. And at the French National, I was fortunate to get a bursary to go to the French National Circus School and study acrobatics in the air and on the ground. <laughs> single person in this project has been so hungry to move, to dance, that, that, that's been the, the, the driving appetite for it really, that they're, they're longing to dance and to diffuse the literal part of the story, you know, it sort of gives, it gives an audience a bit of breathing space as well, because if you have everyone just at you talking and acts and that and it's such a gift to be able to just witness someone in motion without having to figure out what they're going on about. It's, it, there's a poetry to it, I suppose. Um, and it's, you know, it's all about shifting the energy into the next montage. I mean, I haven't really got... I haven't really got a clue what's going on. <laughs> and that's became my metaphor as well. The shh. I imagine with this wonderful collage, Jackie's word, of images and ideas and sounds and symbols that are, that are there in the mix, that sometimes it would be really, really good to, and we are doing it in it indeed, to really embrace the theatrical and to really go there with the gauzes that come down. So at times it seems that we're in some rather creative holding space that has notions of, of you know, um, being caught at customs or being held at migrants or at refugees or asylum seekers type of experience. So in a way that we are in out the created world, and at other times, the theatrical elements, the artifacts of, of theatre, are very apparent, and we really kind of use them almost like showtime. Stop! Stop immediately! Ah. Permission to stay has been withdrawn. You may not stay here. You must leave. No, no, no. Mary, wait! 
answer me. Darling. Um, I just want to say just about that last little, uh, that last question. Um, when they started to boogie in Jitterbug, that struck me as completely true. Um, I come from a displaced background, so I felt this evening, uh, this afternoon, very, very viscerally. Uh, and when they started to boogie, um, it was, it was so true. Because I remember that when my family or their friends got together, displaced people party hard. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. Mm -hmm. And uh, they take every grain of happiness that they can and they let it go. Um, so I thought it was really moving to see that and then being told to you have to move on because that was really their history. So that's, that's what I've personally got out of it, is working with these different, you know, wonderful performers. Who knows what the, uh, the, outcome. the outcome of it will be. I suppose that's part of the process, you know. I was being asked to, and I didn't quite know, obviously know what to expect, to uh, take a look at some attitudes I might have, be a wake up a bit to some things that were taking place. I know you, you, I've got your views of the refugees and, and that displacement, but I sort of logged into the kind of, hang on a minute, this is me you're talking about, um, and uh, this is me that you're a, acting out, or, or I am acting out this way, and how am I relating to myself in relationship to some of the issues that you were raising? Um, so from, from that perspective, you know, it's a simple thing, you know, I just want to twinkle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really simple thing. <laughs> Uh, 